This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. In the game of health coverage, Farm Bureau Health Plans is the MVP. Tennesseans have relied on unmatched rates, coverage, and service for over 77 years from Farm Bureau Health Plans. That was zippy. Was it? I liked it. It's new. It is. It's quite nice. It's new. It's new. Welcome to the new OTP. Amy Wells, Mike Keith, glad to have you with us. Uh, The Rules Show. Yeah. The Rules OTP. Um, I didn't get a lot of response. I I guess no one. (laughs) No one watched it. No one watched slash listened, do you think? I I, think it was better. Was it too much? No, I think it was well received. The the few things that I saw. (laughs) But here's what we have to remember, (laughs) folks. There's nothing. (laughs) Let me tell you. If you want to kill a podcast listenership (laughs) slash viewership. Do a podcast on rules. Well, I did it's have some people. I did have some people say it was informative. <laughs> informative is like when you make a meal and someone says it's interesting. Well, no, it's not usually. I, no, good. because mm, I, I mean, that I was do, informative. I do think the whole kickoff thing was helpful. I think it was too. And w- recently, we were on a call with the league where they were explaining the rule and everything just uh, they're doing a very good job of making sure that the people need to know understand what it is they're going to be talking that's about. when i knew last week's otp was dry <laughs> 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 when i was listening to, i was thinking oh that was did we, brutal did we put the ot people through this no we didn't but i, I, bring I think that we up. were more lively and energetic than they were on the call not that they weren't informative yeah it, it was a little dry but Whoa. I felt like I was further along in my understanding of what was going on than most of the other people who were engaging in this call with the NFL. Well, that's and true. And so I felt good about that. We were ahead. Yeah. And, and if you watch the Hall of Fame game. We were ahead. We were ahead. Yeah. So I think that while it may not have been our jazziest <laughs> episode, I do it was think not, it was not jazzy. But I think it provided a lot of good information, <laughs> and if you haven't listened to it, it might or be worth it. your time. Yes, it I might mean, be worth were, your time to go back were, check it out. There were visual aids. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, so you could see. Oh, we did, we did the best that we could well, with what I is not was, an I th- overly attractive topic. It, it was. I mean. I mean, it wasn't death or taxes, but it's not. It was close. Death, taxes, yeah, and rule changes. Pretty close. Like, but oof. you know more than your friends. Which is all we want to do here on the OTP. We want to make <laughs> you smarter than your friends. It's literally all we care about. That's you, what we're here for. if you fell asleep on top of your computer. Rewind. Uh, we apologize. I and it's And it's my fault. I mean, it was my idea. I thought, oh, well, this will be great. It was great. I for, well, great is really strong. It is function over fashion for sure. It was functional. It was it fashionable? Absolutely. No, not. I mean it's, no. like, it's like there's no click. Hey, do you like these pants? Oh, mm, yeah. Those are uh huh. What a color! They cover your legs. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, we provided a service. We provi- Not we all of our podcasts will we be don't like want, that. We don't want to provide a service. We provided we, a service. Well, that's not really... I mean, is that really what we want to do on the OTP? Well, yeah, provide I mean, a service? Okay, so now we're going to have a conversation about the like what we're doing here on the official Titans well, podcast. What are we doing here? Let's let's really get down to do <laughs> what we are re- we doing? Do we really know what we're doing here? Yeah. Okay, what I think is, we're and, providing a service. See, don't say that. Why? The guy who unclogs your drain is providing a service. No, anybody who helps me out is providing a service. Well, yeah, and I'm appreciative of the guy who unclogs your drain. That's providing a service. That's I'm helping worthwhile. the people out. I want you to be smarter than your friends. I'm here to help you do well, that. Well, here's what you paid for it. Nothing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you paid zero dollars. So you're. I'm not saying this is a high quality service. Well, no, it is. We want it. <laughs> Farm Bureau Health Plans is doing the old sponsorship here. Farm don't, Bureau Health Plans paid for it. Yeah, they, <laughs> you did not. Uh, <laughs> and so for the final week, they sponsor. Uh, <laughs> Get that zippy read in one more uh, time. That zippy read, uh, it, and it's a very good read. I didn't, I didn't do it very well because I hadn't practiced, practiced it. it. Yeah. Do you practice those? Not generally. No, mm. I just let them roll. <laughs> I thought you practiced. Did, did I stand around and practice reading commercials? I mean, 
mean you're really good at it. Well, you're nice to say that. Yeah. Thank you. But no, I mean, I don't. I mean, that would be weird. Can you imagine somebody walking by my office while I'm going, when it's crunch time for your health care, trust Farm Bureau Health Plans. I mean, they would really think I was more strange than they already do. No, I don't think so. Well, this is our week, though. Yeah. Because we're playing ball on Saturday. We have a broadcast. We do have a broadcast. So don't it's stand coming. around and read the commercials. Get ready for the broadcast. Yeah. There's lots to do. So the game's at 6 o'clock on Saturday night, right. 6 o'clock Central at Nissan Stadium. That means Titans Radio on the air at 5 with the award-winning Titans Countdown. Can't wait. And that's you and Rep Bryan and Brad Willis. Yep. And Ramon Foster. Yep. And Coach Mack. We're all there. And I will interview the head coach. It's going to be great. I think people are... A lot more intrigued by the preseason, not just a little more intrigued, not just somewhat more intrigued. I think they're a lot more intrigued by the preseason because of A, all the new players, B, the new coaching staff, and C, the fact that a lot of the top line guys are going to play. Yeah, I think there's a, there's a lot to watch with so much new. I think when you're looking at a team that has so much brand new, there's so many things to get excited about. I mean, you just listed off the top three biggest ones. I think that when there's that much kind of buzz around a team, the preseason all of a sudden becomes a lot more exciting and the games feel a little bit more gamey. Feel a little bit more... It feels less like a dress rehearsal and it feels more like something that's intriguing to Like you're going to see something. Yeah. Like you're going to, like, for example, San Francisco's the opponent Saturday night. I don't know what they're going to show. I mean, Probably they went to nothing. the Super Bowl and they're pretty veteran. And Yeah. It'll be, I'm guessing theirs will be pretty vanilla. I guess ours from a scheme standpoint will be pretty vanilla. Yeah. But you might get to see some cool people doing vanilla Do stuff. Do you know who the backup quarterback is for the San Francisco 49ers? If Brock Purdy doesn't play, no. who will start? No. Brandon Allen is their backup quarterback, and he's fighting for that job with none other than Joshua Dobbs. Oh. Yeah. To see, that's exciting. You want to come out and watch him play. Watch, come watch. And, and Juwan Jennings, who's from Murfreesboro originally, back together with Dobbs. And who is Brandon Allen? Brandon Allen's a guy who's kind of bounced around the league. Huh. He's had He's kind of had a nice run. I mean, he's made a good living being a backup quarterback in this league. I think he's getting close to double-digit years in the league. Whoa. I mean, that that's some serious checks. Man, that's a dream. Being a backup, backup quarterback, quarterback in the NFL. Whew, if I could have any job in the world, it might be that one. Our first color commentator on Titans Radio was Pat Ryan, who was a backup quarterback for the Jets for 13 years. And probably a really cool guy. The best. See? Still the best. I yeah. saw him two weeks ago. He's still the best. See? just And people loved him. He's doing the Tennessee games now with Bob Kessling, and Pat doesn't have – quite as much of a chance to be effusive on the Tennessee broadcast because Josh Heupel runs that offense where they, they run a play every 16 seconds or something. So the color commentator does not have as much a chance to jump in. But when Pat was doing our games, he, he had carte blanche much like Coach Mack does. <laughs> and, you know, he's from Oklahoma. Coach Mack's from Texas. But people from Oklahoma are very... Very direct. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Well, I mean, uh, direct for the Midwest, yes. Well, that's really more the Southwest, right? Oklahoma? Oklahoma? No, Oklahoma is pretty Midwest. You think? Well, I, I know for a fact they're Missouri's neighbor, after all. Okay. I've been there many a time. All right. Let's talk about your interview with Devondre Sweat. Yeah. Can we move to that? I would love to. Because he's from Texas. So. He's from, that was a really good transition. We Thank just you. continued going further south. So we had him in the Bed MGM studio. And you got to have a conversation with him on the day that he told his mother she was getting the house. Yeah. And it, it was very just lucky. We didn't know. We had the this scheduled to do the interview with him and we scheduled it earlier in the week and had no idea that he was planning to do that the same day was staging this huge surprise for his mom. So we literally sat him down in the chair like 15 minutes after he told her that he was buying her her dream house and she was standing in the house. Like the whole thing was incredible 
And to be able to talk to him that soon after, I felt very fortunate that we were able to to have a conversation about something that he had just done. A lot of times there's like a day or two that goes by and so they're very reflective and he was still very much in the moment of, oh my gosh, I just did this thing that I've wanted to do my whole life. Second round pick out of Texas, the nose tackle who's done a good job in, in training camp to this point. The story about the athlete giving his or her mother a house never gets old. No, it's always great. I don't think it'll ever get old. It's like the ultimate in showing someone that you care about them That's in right. a very useful way. People need <laughs> homes. Very useful. It, it is. I mean, people well, need homes. Wait a minute. People would, want to live. Li- Amy, would you not think more th- in a thoughtful way? No, that because I don't. I, think I mean, she probably already has a place, a place that she to, lives. Right. But what I'm saying is to be able to give somebody their dream home, what a useful way to show somebody that you care about that. Well, that's not the way I'd put it. I mean, I would say really wildly thoughtful and considerate and loving and giving, and you're going with useful? <laughs> it's useful. I don't... Wow. I mean, that's I, like that's like I gave you a blender when you got married. I mean, no. that's useful. No, because... No, oh, a fo- I What was it, a food processor? What is it I did? <laughs> I did something like that. No, you actually gave me something very nice and thoughtful. You gave me like beautiful wine glasses. That's right. I did. Yeah. yeah. And it was very thoughtful. Yeah. But like a house would have been well, more useful. Well, I don't know. Because <laughs> I already <laughs> have any, wine glasses. If anybody's ever seen the OTP, they, <laughs> they know. They might think wine glasses are <laughs> useful. <laughs> That's a good point. Let's see some of Amy's <laughs> talk with Devondre Sweat here on the OTP. This is not just useful, it's very special. You had the opportunity to do something else, and that's buy your mom a home. Correct. Tell me about that, the lead up to that. When did you know you wanted to do that? The combine. I knew since then when I got in combine, I was like, dang, this is real. I feel finally buy my mom the dream home she always wanted, you know? And one thing I did, I promised my mom that um, I was gonna get her a dream home. And it came true. She got surprised, so. It's just amazing, you know, and she stayed on my butt 24-7 for this opportunity, you know, for me to take care of her, you know. She sacrificed so much, like so much for me and my brothers, and I can't just be more thankful for a mom like that. So for all the people out there, love you, mom. You've uh, you've talked pretty openly about how much you love your mom, how mm-hmm. much you respect her, how much she's meant in your life. Was it always a goal, not just to make it to the NFL, but to make it to a place where you could afford to do something like this? I, I, first off, I want to just say, I love this game. I respect this game, you know? And if you don't respect this game, this game would give you nothing, you know? And so that's my biggest thing, just respecting this game and just love playing football, you know? And just what I love to do gave me the opportunity to make a certain amount to even take care of my people, so. How'd you find the house? I asked her what she wanted to like stay at in Houston. I tried to move her somewhere else, but she, my mom loved Houston. <laughs> she grew up there from there, you know. Um, I asked her what area she wanted to stay in. I kind of threw in like Katy and like the Woodlands, Conda, or yeah. like Memorial area. She was like, nah, I want to go to Humble. So she lived in Humble, Texas, and it's just amazing. She picked the house out though, four or five options, and she this that's the one she exactly wanted, and I got it. So that's I'm blessed to even have got that home, and nobody else got it before me. So that's a real covert operation though to go from like, hey mom, where do you want to live? What about here? What about here? Mm-hmm. What do you think of these houses? Here's a Zillow list. What do yep. you think about these? I mean, this had to have been. Uh, weeks, if not months, in the making. Months, 100%, you know, and just have her just look at different homes. And that that house she got now, that's the one that caught her eyes. And I, like I said, it's just a blessing. Honestly, it's a blessing to even do that for my mom. And I can't be more thankful and thank God. How good does it feel to be able to achieve a goal like that? It's one that's so tangible. It feels amazing. like. I've been grinding. She's been on my butt 24-7, like, every day. 
still when I get home, she gonna call me later and be like, so tell me about practice. Even though I just surprised what has how practice go, what you mess up on, you know. And that's what I love about my mom. You know, she, she it's all tough love, and a lot of people need tough love out here in this world. And I feel like I'm one of those people. You know, that's what she shows me. So I just can't be more thankful for a mother like that. Tavondre Sweat on the OTP. Amy did an interview with him, and it was very good. And there'll be other parts of the interview that will run later in the year in some different places uh, that and and it's also very useful but I thought it was it was a very good interview it was just so nice to hear him be so genuinely just blown away that he was able to do this for his favorite person and then he got datelined he did get datelined oh my <laughs> gosh it was like you came out from behind the refrigerator I, did. I came from over here holy smokes. so it's laying in the weeds yeah <laughs> because so when we had Tavondre on the OTP, Tavondre Sweat played at Texas, and he brought up the fact that Texas was the real UT. Can we just roll the clip? Whoa, 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 whoa. Just hang on. Uh, the original one. You just want to roll that? I want to roll okay, the original roll clip. The... U UT fan, I believe, and her son. You mean University is... of Tennessee? Oh, no. What? <laughs> No, no, no. Uh, Longhorn. Okay. Hook them. Do you know where you are now? I know where I'm at. This I still Tennessee. bleed orange. Burnt. Hmm. Is that real Burnt. orange? Orange. Do you think that's real orange? Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, yeah, I was before. Yeah, 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 yeah but. Hey, not, yeah, like a long time. Before. Mike, huh? he's a lot bigger than you. Well, I know, <laughs> but I'm just, you know. Just like a lot. When you went to I'm, Tennessee. Like yeah, a I did. lot. Ah, no, y'all not the real T. Glad you're coming to a real conference now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're going to run it. Yeah, we're going to run it. I'm starting to sweat. <laughs> <laughs> don't sweat it. We're having fun. I graduated too. I, I don't know if y'all said that, but I graduated. Yeah. The real UT. Mm. <coughs> mm. Real mm. UT. Mm. Mm. You know, mm. education. Look. Well, it's a great school. Great. It's a great school. Better school. Less. Yep. Better, better school. No, don't do that. Come on. <laughs> Remember where Let's you Let's be were. honest. I mean, I know I'm in Nashville, but. I'm trying to help you. This is where you work now. Yeah, you I'm a be... Titan, not a Tennessee. It's not, uh, a, it's not a Tennessee. Not a University you're, you're a of vol, Tennessee. A volunteer. And they're the volunteers because they volunteered to come save Texas in the 1840s, which is what happened. <sighs> Oh I mean, it gosh. is. Look this it up. Is, this is getting out of control. But no. The real UT. No, you're the real Texas. Oh, come on. But you're, you know. Y'all can't compete with us. You go find <laughs> out. Yeah, we is. Mm -hmm. We sure is. All right, so you can see Tavondre Sweat started it. But it got a little spicy. It did. <laughs> he, he started it. And so you finished it? Well, and it got out there on the old social media and, uh, you know, Couple people watched it. Couple people did. It was funny because all the Texas people were, "Woo, here we go!" You know, they were really. Mm -hmm. And then finally, the Tennessee people woke up. I was kind of waiting on you, <laughs> and then they responded. All right, so let's show you the Dateline moment from after <laughs> the interview. <laughs> Have you come off the the UT thing now since you've gotten the SEC? No. The, who the know. real you yeah. see, look right here so if you look right here so cooper mays preseason all conference ut kelvin banks jr preseason is he good kelvin, oh great tex so it looks like the sec well, the sec has settled this or so it seems y'all didn't want us to come to the conference first well, yeah we y'all scared now, why are we scared the sec which is the conference you came to says that ut yeah. is tennessee I, I think they should i just start calling you tex all right so i got old tex there you got him yeah there's not a whole lot he could say he tried it's just it has been decided the sec decided it yeah but he's such a good sport, and, and he's, he's really a lot of fun. He's just funny. Listen, if you can't have fun with one another about sports, what can you joke about? That's true. Wine glasses. Brings everybody together. Wine and sports. Sort of. <laughs> um, the same day you did 
an interview with Tavondre Sweat, I interviewed another Titans defensive lineman, Sebastian Joseph Day. And he is one of the free agents that I have been most excited about all along because he has played well against the Titans on multiple occasions. This is one of those quality defensive linemen that, quite frankly, don't get the credit that they always deserve because they make everybody around them better. I thought this was a great get for the Titans. And is he not an impressive human being? He's one of the most interesting men alive. I wow. mean, he's one of those people that he's involved in a lot of different things. He is incredibly smart, um, and he has just such a good story. And so the way that he has kind of just ha- handled himself throughout kind of a tumultuous couple of years career-wise was interesting to me. Everything about him was just interesting. Should we show a little of the interview? I would love to. Well, yes. let's roll that. Sebastian Joseph Day, number 69 for your Tennessee Titans on the OTP. Sebastian Joseph Day. How you doing? I like saying your name. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. It sounds like a uh, it sounds like a movie star name. Nah, I don't know about that. I mean, coming from <laughs> Los Angeles, you played in Los Angeles, you come to us, and it's like that's that's like somebody who would be in movies. Oh, I appreciate that. I mean you're I mean, your compliments are so nice, man. Um, well, my name comes from my grandfather was a politician in Haiti. So he was a day and uh, my grandmother remarried. So to honor both of them, it's Joseph Day. That's kind of how it came about. It's a spectacular name, a star name. Mm-hmm. And yet you're very much a blue collar player. Yeah, you know, uh, I feel like that's kind of been uh, kind of my my life story growing up, you know, especially with my parents are both two immigrants from Haiti, uh, came from nothing. Uh, came with a dollar and a dream. Uh, my dad just worked his butt off, went back to school, became an engineer, um, and kind of just instilled that mentality into me. You know, just everything you want, you got to go get, man. Nothing's easy, and uh, that's the only way you can be successful, you know, just kind of getting out the mud. So I just kind of try to, I guess that's kind of how I've just been raised and how, I guess, my career and everything's been for me. Is it fair to say that 2023 was a weird year for Sebastian Joseph Day. Yeah, definitely a weird year. Um, it was it was a blessing though. I still consider it a blessing because you know my son was born and I, for the first time, faced adversity in my professional career as a football player. You know everything was going so well, and um, I wouldn't have had it any other way because you know. Again, my son was born and he taught me so much more about myself. And then obviously um, the craziness ensued with, you know, my coach getting fired, my D-line coach getting fired, um, me being hurt and trying to get surgery. It was just a bunch of stuff going on. So it was kind of crazy. But um, again, I wouldn't trade it for the world because I feel like that made me grow in ways I never thought I would, you know, as a man, as a man, as a father, as a husband, um, and as a football player, you know, I had to, I had to find that love again. Um, I had to look myself in the mirror and, and, uh, talk to myself and just, you know, be like, what, like, what do you want? You know, how bad do you want it? And, um, that's, I feel like that's, that's the epitome of what life is. And that's, what's the beauty of what football is, you know, sometimes it's, uh, it's, it's very, it's very uh, interconnected with life. You know, there's your ups and there's your downs, but at the end of the day, it's about just dusting yourself off and keep pushing. Let me set up your strange December, if you don't mind. Yeah. So middle of the month, head mm-hmm. coach and GM with the Los Angeles Chargers are both fired. Yeah. December 22nd, they come to you, the, mm-hmm. the new brass. You're captain of the team, one mm-hmm. of the captains. Mm-hmm. 14 game starter. You're doing what you've done your whole career, which is basically after your rookie year, you've started every game you've played, and they let you go. Yeah. I, I mean, are you in shock at that moment? Um, yeah. Yeah. Shock was definitely uh, the word. Like I said, it was definitely a surprise. And um, and a lot of people don't know I was actually hurt. Right. Um, I, I tore my TFC in my wrist, so I was playing injured. And uh, so that really sucked too, because you know I was trying to sacrifice for the team. They knew, they told me. I think it happened, I believe, a couple like a couple weeks before all that ensued, 
And they were like, hey, listen, it's either, because we still had a shot to go to playoffs. And like, hey, listen, it's either you get surgery and you're out for the rest of the season, or you help us try to make this playoff push. And uh, obviously, you know, as a captain, I'm like, I'm going to deal with the pain. Like, I'm going to deal with it, you know. I'll do anything, you know, I'll do anything to help this team try to win. And then, um, yeah, that ensued. But, you know, it's no hard feelings, man. It's, end of the day, I, it's business. Um, I have nothing but love for the Chargers because, you know, it was a, it was experience and they gave me an opportunity to play the game that I love. Um, and I wish them nothing but the best. But again, it, I, um, I'm super thankful for it because, again, it shaped me in so many ways. And honestly, it led me to here, right? And it was funny because I was actually not going to play. I wasn't going to play. I was done. I was trying to get surgery. I was trying to get healthy for free agency because, um, you know, I had an idea, obviously, with everything going down. But again, it, it really was a blessing because it, it worked out. I mean, because here you are. I mean, that weekend and Christmas, you've got to be going, what in the world? Yeah. <laughs> and you're thinking, I'm going to go ahead and have the surgery on my wrist. Yeah. And the 49ers call. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, and honestly, it was funny. Like I was, and again, I was in a dark place for sure. Cause kind of like what you were saying, all those things that, you know, run through your head. You're like, man, like, what did I like, did I, you know, you just try to figure out like, you know, I was a leader. I, you know, I try to be a leader. I, try, I always try to do my best. I always try to um, help everyone out. So, you know, you start questioning yourself, you start questioning who you are and the things you've done and like, are there things that you could have done better? You know, you have to be harsh on yourself. And obviously you have to be harsh on yourself, you know? That's the point of this game. Like, no one's perfect and you gotta be harsh on yourself. You gotta find ways to improve. So obviously I did that and <laughs> a couple teams called, not just the Niners, there was a couple of great, great, great teams called. And then when the Niners called, my agent was like, hey man, like, come on, like, this team's probably gonna be in the Super Bowl. Like, you're like, it's either gonna be them or the Ravens, them or the Ravens in the Super Bowl or the Chiefs, you know? Like, you gotta, like, you, I, I get it. I get you're hurt. I know you want surgery, but you gotta make a decision. You gotta think about this. So I prayed on it. I honestly prayed on it because I didn't wanna make a decision based off um, selfishness, based off like revenge or based off of, oh, I'm gonna, you know, based off, I, wanna, I wanted to sure. make a decision based off of, pure love for the game and know that I was going to put my all into those that, those playoff games and learning a whole new because you know it's a lot you know learning a whole new oh, system sure. learning a whole new playbook um getting to know everyone building rapport so you know how certain guys play so I just wanted to make sure that um I did it with a pure heart if that made sense you know like I wasn't, it wasn't a business it, decision it, yeah it wasn't a business decision I wanted it to be out of the love for the love the game love the game that I have you know and for the fact that you know, I want that I want to do something special with a group of men, you know, and um, prayed on it. And uh, I felt like God, God uh, really answered, really gave me that, gave me that answer through um, multiple signs. So I was just really thankful. And yeah, so I joined up with them. So as strange as the end of December was, <laughs> January and February were personally and professionally fulfilling. A hundred percent. So fulfilling. It was just good to be um, part of something special, you know, again, like seeing it because, you know, my career with the Rams, it was so special. Um, so many great people, so many um, great coaches, so many um, great support staff, just so many. And it was just good to be in that environment again, just remembering how it feels like. Um, and that's no that's no, um, you know, shade sure. to anyone. But um, it was, it, it really was a very healing process. And I, was, and I got to play football again, man. I got to do what I love. Even though I was banged up, it was fun. Cause at the end of the day, you know, you're competing for something special with a group of men, a group of men that are awesome and, and trying to do something that's very uncommon. So for you, three Super Bowls in your time in the league with the Rams, and then you went to the Chargers, and then you spent a short period of time with the 49ers, went to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And then you make a decision. You're going to come back east mm -hmm. after all your careers in California and the yeah, pros. Yeah. You're going to come back east, and you're a Titan. Why? Well, shout out to Ran. You know, shout out to Ran, Coach Cal Callahan. Um, you know, they uh, they're awesome for you know giving me the opportunity to come here first and foremost. You know, and um, a big reason was because of what Titans I think represent. You know, toughness, grit. Um, blue collar. I just feel like every time I've played them, um, it's I knew I had to like 
you know, buckle my chin strap, you know? <laughs> the times I played, I think I played the Titans three times, right? Yeah. Three times. And you've and been annoying every time. <laughs> you have been annoying. I appreciate that. Uh -huh. um, uh, but you are uh, that guy. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not, honestly. I'm not. I appreciate that, though. But um, every time I, I, I play the Titans, it's... I'm so, I'm hurting the next day, you know. Like I know it's gonna be a physical game. I know it's gonna be it's gonna be a nitty gritty, no games, you know, going down to the wire game. I know that you know they have amazing players and what they represent and the toughness and the resilience and and the grit and just just the blue collar like bring your lunch pail and hard hat mentality they had. I just I just felt as if. Um, it would be a great mix, you know. I felt like, you know, obviously they have great players here already, you know, um, guys like Simmons and Key and Arden Key and Landry, and uh, you know, I just figured, why not, you know, just try to help any way I can, and that's kind of just my mentality, just trying to help win in any way I can, any way the coaches want me to. Sebastian Joseph Day, you are a man with a very special set of skills. <laughs> you know, that's why you're you've been pursued by so many quality organizations because. You do things beyond statistics. What do you consider that special set of skills that you bring to any defensive line and now the Titans defensive line? <laughs> Oof, I don't, I don't know. I don't like talking about myself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think one thing I do bring is versatility. I think uh, I could play anywhere. You put me, line me up anywhere. You line me up at the five. Line me up at the four. Line me up at the three. I mean, up at the shade because I played nose. A lot of my a lot, a lot of my success came from me playing nose next to Aaron and Brock, Brock Michael Brockers, Aaron Donald, and Michael Brockers. So I and you know so I could play it all. I think that's kind of my my um, niche. You know, you could put me anywhere if you want me on a bigger guy. Like I know the Rams they used to like have they used to put me on put me at defensive end to help with the certain runs on bigger guys and stuff like that. So I think um, that's kind of my niche, I'd say. All right, so we met some defensive linemen on this show. Yeah. Kind of a defensive edition of the OTP. But first, I have to say, hey, Titans fans, SeatGeek makes it easy to find tickets so you can be part of all of the touchdown celebrations, whether you're buying or selling football tickets. SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek is the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. The most disruptive idea in ticketing, a ticket that works. Expect the expected seat geek. Seat geek. Seat geek. That's an exclamation point, Mike. It does. Well, seat I, I mean, I thought I, I thought I gave you it a punch. You punched it, yeah. I hope I have the, the punch ready to go on Saturday night. Are you fired up? I am. You get to call a game. I love it. I love it. I've always been considered odd among my friends for a lot of reasons. But my broadcast friends, because I love doing preseason games, I like to call a game, period. Yeah. I mean, if we had a game 52 weeks a year, three times a week, I would be happy. The more games we do, the happier I am. And I like the preseason, too, because there are very different storylines. Now, I'll say this. By the time we get to the final five minutes of the New Orleans preseason game, which is the final one, I'm ready for the regular season like everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> I totally get that. But but the storylines, and, and we're going to see the starters some, and then I'm going to be interested to see who are the players that go in after the starters. We've seen the first incarnation of the depth chart, and yet what does that mean in terms of how guys will go in? Yeah. And then you're saying, okay – who who gets the chance to show themselves because those are the players that you're saying, all right, they want to see these guys to see if they can make the roster. Well, we get to do the fun roster math games now. So there's I love the, the roster. I know. There's like cap room math that you do yeah. during the off season and then we get to roster math. And roster math is very exciting because you get to see with that rotation with the way the depth charts are kind of lining up, okay, how many guys are we going to have at this spot or that spot? And who can make a difference on special teams? Or in some, uh, who can find one of those empty spots? Where are those? I mean, it's Mike Keith's favorite game. And so that comes into the excitement around. Well, I have to watch it too because I just need to call the game. You've got a roster map on your free time. I do. Yeah. 
Because you can't really do that on the radio. No. Radio is not a visual medium. It sure isn't. And so when you start talking about a lot of numbers on the radio, people can't see the numbers in their head when they're listening. Right. And so it doesn't make much sense. So I have to guard against that. Yeah, I know. Because you really do enjoy it. I love it. Yeah. I, I love the game of all of the roster building. And I will stand and talk to people about this for hours. Yeah. Because I'm interested in the 53-man roster, and I'm interested in the 69-man roster, which would include the 16 practice squad guys. Good catch. Yeah, thank you. Mm-hmm. And then I'm interested in the 48 people up on game day because you look at the roster building process and you say, okay, they're going to keep an offensive lineman or two who are going to be down on game day. Mm-hmm. They are going to keep a defensive lineman or two, but generally one. You know, they're going to be three linemen, offense, defense combined, who are going to probably be inactive on game day mm-hmm. because you're always looking to keep depth with the big guys and you, you generally get somebody hurt and it goes like that. Then where do the other spots come from? Because you don't normally keep maybe a wide receiver, but you don't normally keep a lot of running backs to make them inactive. Mm-hmm. Not when you could keep them on the practice squad. Yeah, that's a good point. So so who is good enough to be on the 53 but not ready for prime time, so to speak, to be on the 48? And um, it, it's, an, it, it's an interesting math to all of it. It's a, the game within the game. Within the game. Within the game. Yep. We do know one guy who's going to be on the roster is Quandre Diggs. Yes. Safety, three-time Pro Bowler, just signed with your Tennessee Titans. And uh, in here and getting work and, you know, don't have any idea what he does Saturday, you know. But but the point is, he's here and... He's a Titan. He's a Titan. More safety depth, more veteran. And now as you look at this defense, I mean, let's just say... Yeah. Let's say they start Sebastian Joseph Day and they start Tavondre Sweat and Jeffrey Simmons in the defensive line. Okay, two veterans. Yeah. One rookie. Linebacker. Let's say they go Harold Landry and let's say Arden Key, but we know, you know, there's 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 some some question. Yeah. Yeah. And then Jack Gibbons and Kenneth Murray. Well, I mean, Jack Evans is in his third year, but he's played a lot of football. So basically yeah. four veterans. Yeah. Then you go to the secondary. If Quandre Diggs starts with Amani Hooker and then you have Jamal Adams who also, I mean, he could be the starter and they're going to play a lot of three safeties. Right. And then you have Cheeto Wuze and Legereus Sneed at corner and you have Roger McCrary at the nickel. And you potentially play Elijah Molden some in situations. Those are all veteran players. Wow. And and a lot of them, fifth year players are better. And even some, I mean, Roger McCrary's played a ton of football. Yeah. So all of the sudden Molden has played a ton of football. All of the sudden, the Titans defense and specifically that secondary has gone from being a really young, raw right. group of people with like nobody who was really a strong veteran leader to an entire like side of the ball, an entire half of your team that's led by veteran, veteran. starters. Isn't that interesting? That's crazy. Quandre Diggs, uh, interesting story. So he's from Angleton, Texas. Okay. Uh, four-star corner, goes to Texas, starts four straight years. Three under Mac Brown, one under Charlie Strong. Um, he's 5'9", 5'10", 195 pounds. Mm -hmm. He's taken 200th overall by Detroit. They immediately put him in the nickel. That's (laughs) what he becomes. Well, so then, end of the 2017 season, which is the end of his third year, like uh, late November, December, safety gets hurt. They move him to safety. They move Quandre Diggs to safety. And by the next year, he gets a contract. 
gets a like an eighteen point six million dollar three year contract, and everything's going great. He's a captain of the team. Matt Patricia comes in as the coach in nineteen, and that just doesn't go well in a lot of different ways. Yeah, that was. And so in October bad. he trades Quandre Diggs to Seattle, and at that point everybody's like, "Wait a minute, you just traded a guy that you know he's played for. He's played for this team for four plus years." He's turning into a really good player now that he's found his spot. What are we doing here? Well, yeah. then all he does, his first full year in Seattle, <laughs> and then his next two, he goes to the Pro Bowl. Like three years in a row? Three years mm -hmm. in a row, 20 through 22. Yep. Intercepts 14 passes in that time. Last year, 95 tackles and just one interception, but another really solid year. And then they need the money. And so they waive him and yep. in March. And he's been on the market. Safeties don't get paid like they once did. Mm -mm. And I think he was waiting on an opportunity, probably waiting to get the best deal he could get. Gets a deal from the Titans. And now he's here, a 31-year-old guy who's played a lot of football. And his game is still pretty much his game. One of the questions about him at corner is he didn't have the quote-unquote long speed. He was like just under a four six forty, which you can do in college. In the pros, it's harder. So safety and and having the ability because he's a smart player to play in space, he's him I and he has been a proven commodity time and time again to put with Jamal Adams and Amani Hooker. And I think the guy who benefits more than anybody in this is Hooker. Yeah. I think he is the one, he's the big winner in this. Well, and Hooker, for the longest time, was almost doing too much because there were so many different things going Maybe. on. There were so many things yeah. that were changing all the time. I think he was trying to plug a lot of holes and really couldn't be as successful as we have seen him be at some points. Having some help around him, and we've seen historically, when there's someone else there that can help kind of shoulder that load, he plays better. Yeah. And so now having all of these veterans around to be able to really divide and conquer and really everyone can sh take their share of the responsibilities in that kind of phase of the game, I think that all of them are going to be able to play to their best abilities because they can just do their job. Just do your job. So... The Titans had to come up with a roster spot for Quandre Diggs. Right. The roster spot was created by the retirement of Sadiq Charles. Yeah. Who had played a lot of first-team snaps since the spring at right guard coming over from Washington. And so now all of a sudden um, – Right guard just got a lot more interesting. It just got a lot more interesting. I mean, we're talking about things to watch in the preseason games. There's one to watch um, because, to your point, I mean, he had been a, a mainstay in that spot. Well, and, and Sadiq, too, you know, when they signed him, he flew himself to Nashville. Um, and they're like, well, you can't come in here yet until we – can We're not done. Yeah, we yeah. can't. We've got to. We've got to have a contract. But he was so excited to play for Bill Callahan, and so you know this. These things happen all the time. I, I mean, they yeah. ha they happen all the time in off seasons, and you know, you know, I don't I don't know what the rationale will will be. I mean, we've just learned the news as we tape this, so we we haven't heard. But Dylan Radens. Certainly gets more of a look at that spot. Uh, Daniel Brunskill, who started there last year, is still there. Uh, Lachavius Simmons has been playing a lot of guard and has looked very good in camp. Uh, off to a good start with some of the backup units. Andrew Rupsich would be in the middle of that. Jaron Christian, who just came over from Cleveland. So, th I mean, there will be... There's plenty of options. There are plenty of candidates, but... He was going to be right in the mix of all of it. And yeah. now we'll have to wait and see. There's never a dull moment. Never a dull moment in camp. Nope, there really isn't. We've had some questions from folks about when shows start. Mm, okay. Yes. So Brian Callahan Radio. Starts August 19th, 6 Central on Titans Radio. One of the things that I wanted to share on this edition of the OTP 
because I think the OT people should know, Amy Wells is now co-host of the Brian Callahan radio show. I am. Yes. I'm very excited. I'm excited to be a part of that radio show. I've never had a co-host on that show. You haven't? Never. Well, shoot, then it's about time. It is. <laughs> no, I'm very excited to be a part of it. I think it's going to be a really but fun that's show. But your, that's your Monday show at 6 that you've grown up with. Uh, the Brian Callahan Show, Monday, August 19th is the first one. In terms of the other radio shows, Mac Talk, which is Coach Mac's show with Rhett Bryan, yep. that actually starts September the 3rd, 6 Central on 104.5 The Zone. Mac Talk begins. And then on the 4th, September 4th, that's Titans Tonight at 6. That's on Titans radio stations. Yep. And so that that begins. So you get a little post-Labor Day treat with yes. Mac Talk and Titans Tonight. Yes. There and there is a Brian Callahan show on August 26th, and there is a Brian Callahan show on Labor Day. Yes, there is. So, so once we start the Brian Callahan show on August 19th, that's actually the first of 20. Woohoo! Okay, TV shows. Yes. Are you ready for TV shows? Hit it. Titans football with Brian Callahan on WKRN and some of our other fine stations throughout the region, which we appreciate. Um, Tuesdays at 6.30. The first one is September 10. Yes. That's an exciting one. The Tuesday one. after the Chicago game. Yes. So Titans football with Brian Callahan, the coach's TV show. Tuesday, September 10th, 6.30. That's the first one. Yes. Yes. Uh, the first Titans All Access. Now in year 22? Yeah, year 22. I was trying to, I was thinking about that. When I was up in the middle of the night trying to figure out how many years of Titans All Access there had been. That's right. I mean, I, that's not what woke me up, but that's what I was thinking about at 2 in the morning the other night. How many years of 22 years yeah. of Titans All Access? So there's the answer. I didn't yes. hit it. I didn't get it at two in the morning. Never once have we done a rules edition, which is why of it's, Titans All Access, which is why it's still on That's after 22 still, years. Yes, still thank you. Running and thank you for your great feedback again on the rules edition. Yeah, it was really it was strong, r- really helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you told us with your silence. Anyway, yeah. it returns. The weekend of the first game. Titans All Access. September the 6th. Yes. Is when it is first shown. And and it's all over the region. Locally, it will be on Fox 17 in Nashville at 6 o'clock on Fridays. Woohoo. Which is really, really exciting right before Big Ten football. That's great. We've never had a, a, an airtime this great in, Na- in Nashville. We've had some good ones, but this is the best. Friday nights at 6, Fox 17. Set your DVR now. Yeah. And Titans game day on WSMV, Channel 4, obviously begins on September the 8th, 10.30 a.m., the morning of the Chicago game, and we'll be doing it from the field at Soldier Field. Very exciting to get back to our TV shows. Um, do you really think people still have DVRs, Mike? Yeah, I do. Do you have a DVR? I mean, is it not called that anymore? I just don't. I don't. I think a lot of people have cut the cord and therefore. Well, no, no, no. I don't have. I, I think there's still. The, I mean, I didn't say a VCR. Digital video I recording did, system I didn't, any longer. Well, I have things that I watch I on DVR. Could, yes. Or do you just save it to the cloud? No, no, no. On your. No, no, no. You still have cable. I, I bet. still have mm. a. Yeah, I do. Mm. Because of where I. Live. live out in the woods. Yes, it's kind of. <laughs> There's no internet where Mike right. lives. Well, it's not, it's not just. <laughs> no, I think it's good. You didn't say TiVo. So. No, I didn't say TiVo. I didn't say car phone. <laughs> I didn't say VCR. Set your VCR timer. Yeah, I didn't say that. <laughs> All right. So, if we do, you think we've covered everything now? I mean, it beat it dead. Most of it. Yeah. Okay. I think I think this was solid. It's been a lot of players. We've we've heard from players. We've seen we've seen the who's the real UT thing. There's been this has been a real potpourri. Potpourri for a hundred. And I think people like that. I don't know. We don't know what people we'll, like. Apparently, we'll, we'll <laughs> we don't find have our out. pulse on what the people like. <laughs> we'll find out. No, I I feel good. Do you feel good? Sure. We're gonna do another one of these early next week. 
fantastic. After the preseason game. When we have some real direction and yeah. things to talk yeah, about. Yeah, we'll uh we may go we may go four downs. <gasps> we may really? go yeah, now that you're back. Mike, we, I haven't gone four he, downs in so long. Well we did a four downs with you last year just because we knew you were leaving for maternity yeah. leave. And so we did that that one time. Oh, that would warm people, my heart. People actually always did respond well to the four downs. I love four downs. I think it's the best I've way to come recap up, a game. I've got to come up with four new downs though. It's time to go with some new I okay. used the same for a while. Yeah. I've got to. I've got to come up with Redo something better. Them. Okay. Gosh, this is exciting yeah. for me now. Well, we'll we'll do that. Oh, you guys. Four Downs is back. We're bringing it Next back. Next week, for Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Just four downs away <sighs> on the OTT. I'm so excited. I know me too.